Well, as with every great game, there is also some bad things to talk about. And this is a video I never thought I would need to do. We are going to talk about the absolute worst thing of my playtest of Planet Coaster 2. And that is going to be the building and the UI as a whole. Now, full disclosure, I already sent a freaking wall of text to Frontier with my feedback, but honestly, I would consider this being a huge issue. I have faith in them fixing a couple of things, but I want to take you on a journey to talk you through what exactly is the issue. The first thing is already on screen. You can see I'm putting down a piece which, you know, you would expect as it is normally in all the Planet games we know so far. And as soon as you're going to scale them and stuff like that, everything seems normal. But as soon as you want to copy a piece and put on another piece, just as I normally do, the problem is that the UI completely disappears. I'll get to that in a later stage of this video. I have a feeling that I know why this is, but the, the whole workflow is so utterly complicated. And there's another thing that really bugs me. You can see I'm building in a group and now I want to copy the piece and see I need to actively open the menu. Click the piece, menu gone. It is so odd to see that. And once I select a piece, it is not even automatically aligning. I need to drag it over here, despite the fact I had auto align on or align to surface, I should say. I never saw exactly, you can see that now. I'm not even aware that I'm still in the group. Um, it is so weird. The piece just doesn't snap to it, even though it was activated. And then whenever I you know, wanted to move the piece, Again, the menu is gone. What if I just wanted to switch out this piece with a different one? Well, it, it's just gone. And then when you release the piece, the menu just opens again and it's gone. Like this is maybe for someone who's not used to the game. It seems odd me talking so much about this right now, but it is a complete showstopper when it comes to building like I want to quickly go through the menu and you know put together my pieces but it totally doesn't work as a workflow and this I've seen other people talking about this and you know the the main feedback was well it just needs some getting used to and it's different honestly I don't want it I don't want this I don't want this to be an excuse this game feels and that's what I meant earlier to be designed for console which in many parts isn't a bad thing because that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad game in any by any means but in this moment where the ui favors console over everything at all times it starts to be a little bit annoying the same ui could easily work well together with the computer version of the game with a couple of changes that i'm coming to in a second i love the fact that this game is going to be released multi-platform but making us be a lot slower than actually in the past is not a good thing and this UI at the moment does it I mean just look at the screen how annoying it's already to watch that I always had to open that freaking menu and that things just didn't really align properly I can't even tell you how frustrating that was. My plan was to build like a tiny bit of a main street building to showcase that the great pieces can work well together as a just pretty much main street theme. And honestly, they do. Like, don't get me started on the pieces. They are too great. We need to do a you know, dedicated video on that. But the UI is such a crazy thing. And honestly, it's, it's not even stopping here. It's not even only about the fact that there are some annoying like behaviors of menus going away or so. The whole menu in its whole has some really weird logical problems. Like there are tabs for certain things that don't require one. And then again, there are some areas where you have like tab by tab by tab, you know, you go in and then you want to have, for example, uh, some scenery objects and you click on them and then there's a subfolder and you go to the next one and there is a subfolder and I'm right like why if you have so many different categories which is great why the heck do they need to be all in the scenery menu why can we not have for example a dedicated foliage menu just as we had it in Planet Zoo as well because it is so annoying to search for stones and for foliage in the same like why the hell don't they just have its own tab for like foliage or nature, for example, and then we have the stones and all the other stuff in there too. That would be so good. And also, why would you change it if it already worked in the past? And yes, that has also been in the console version of Planet Zoo. So it's not even an excuse to say that this is for the console. And I don't even want to be that negative because this playtest as a whole was amazing and I've hopefully... I was able to translate that yesterday. But the UI is in so many places absolutely weird. Um, 
it also starts with a couple of uh, miss sizing of buttons for example like at some point you have buttons that are awfully big which again seems to be a little bit of an a thing for in favor of the controller you know to just skip over there or use the shoulder buttons shoulder buttons is maybe the next point i want to go through you have a lot of menus that you could easily use with the controller i assume to just click through the menus easily and you know how much i was praising the control um on console but when I was doing this, this was a console optimized UI and on the PC you didn't have to deal with that. The good thing is we should normally have the radial menu for whatever odd reason it didn't work in this build for me personally. I'm not sure if that was only on my end, but the radial menu didn't work. So maybe that is the thing that could help provide some better workflow even on computer. But as I couldn't get it to work, it didn't really work out so well. Um, the next bit I want to talk about is obviously the fact if you have all these controller aspects in the game, why don't you just have a couple of changes for the PC version if possible? And by that I mean especially some, you know, things like giving us access to hotkeys again. Some of the hotkeys just don't work or the hotkeys are double in, in double usage. So for example, we are also used to using spacebar to angle snap, activate, activate angle snap, you know, that's the hotkey to toggle that. This one isn't existing anymore, you have to click it in the menu or maybe there's another one, but you know, spacebar is now unpaused the game, which yeah, that makes sense because in many other games that's the case, but it's never been the case in this game. And frankly enough, the button P or the letter P still does the same. It also pauses and unpauses the game. And I could go on forever. The next bit is how the blueprint system and piece system works. On the menu here, you've just seen that if you go to the menu of scenery buildings, you are greeted with the single pieces, first of all, versus the blueprints. The blueprint button is to your right now, as you can see. There's also the Frontier Workshop button. The problem, though, is if they would be consistent with that, okay, I'm fine with this, but in all other menus for facilities and your power management and flumes and coasters, on default, the blueprints are there and you need to actively click on create on the right-hand side. That makes no sense at all. Either you do this for everything or you leave it. Um, and I have spoken to Adam about this briefly during Gamescom, where he told me, and I do share that thought, you know, just to give you a bit of a context that I'm fully aware of why they do this. On Gamescom, he told me that the, the main feedback always was that a lot of people and the majority of people, and I get that, want to quickly put together some blueprints, which honestly, it's exactly the case. So yes, put the blueprints up front. I'm fine with that. But there are some pieces that require a special treatment or you need to have a blueprint of them all. So just to give you a perfect example, the power supply or the whole power items don't have a blueprint. That means they are not appearing in the menu, which then leads to the fact that you can't see them when you click into the menu. You just have to click create first in order to see them, which is a very odd way to do that. Maybe it would be clever to just have a default blueprint of these things as well to make sure that you at least see them visible. And it gets a bit more complicated because the power cables, for example, can't literally have a blueprint. So while I'm a fan of the fact that we need some of the blueprints, I'm not a fan of the fact how it is brought into the game as of now because it is an inconsistent way of doing it. With the coasters over here, you can also see that this is the same case. But there is even another problem, which is just seen. If you put down a coaster, for example, it is not aligned to the ground automatically. It is somewhere floating around your cursor, which is yet again a very obvious example of favoring the controller behavior. Because if you're playing on a controller, obviously you don't have a mouse that moves all across the screen, the center will always be the center where your controller is and you have to then manually bring it down or use one of the shoulder keys, I believe it was the left lower left button, that aligns the piece to the ground automatically, which didn't work with a mouse and keyboard. So I was constantly putting things in mid-air and uh, needed to just change some of the terrain and stuff like that. So that was really frustrating. And um, I don't really think that this needs to be this way. 
There were also a couple of other things in the menu that I was really like, why the heck is it this way? So in some menus, as with the terrain, for example, over here, you can see that you have all these nice icons to your top right. That is totally fine. But then you have the coasters, for example, like the coaster elements that are all over the place and you need to switch between the menus. You need to click right and left the whole time to go through a tiny menu, but you've got so much screen space. Why wouldn't you have all these icons in one, like, scalable window to your right? So many things, I can't get over how frustrating that was. And yet another very obvious example is creating your own scenery brush. As much as I love the fact that you can literally put everything in, as you can see over here, you need to click yourself through the ginormous menu to find these tiny icons of the stuff you want to have. And you need to do this for every single thing, as you can see. I then also clicked on a uh, little letter, what I didn't want to do. And the menu also does not recognize where we've been before. So, for example, in here we are with the bushes. And then I'm going to select one, as you can see now. I'm just going to click on that one. And I want to have a third one. And we are back in the general menu and not back in the other one. It makes it completely drove me crazy. Like, why is there no option to hold down the shift key and just click on a couple of items? And like, how long it took me to make this freaking brush and then go in and find this brush? As you can see, I saved it and I'm not back in the brush menu. No, I needed to go all the way back to the scenery brush to be back in the normal menu. Like, this is another weird behavior. Escape didn't work as you would expect. You needed to close the windows. If you press escape, you always came back to the main menu. Yet another console thing. Like, these things don't have to be in. The UI can literally be the same. But you just need to take out these console first things. I... Ah, uh, it's just... It completely made me crazy to see all these things. Um, like, generally, like, it is amazing to be able to put down the things here with the scenery brush, as you can see. But, man, like, the time it took me to build this together, I would have easily used the spam method we've done so far and create myself a group, you know, and as soon as the group is created, just spam it around by holding down your Y key to rotate it. I'll have the random rotation. That would be lovely. However, this leads me to yet another point. There is no visible indication to where you are building in a group or not. It absolutely is impossible to tell if you're doing a group or not. And multi-select also doesn't really work the same way you would expect it to be. It just always creates a kind of a blocker. It just takes and forces you to do the things how you would do it on console. And I'm really, like, I'm really sad saying that because this game was almost perfect on this playtest, but that was such a huge frustration for me that I needed to get this video out to reinforce what I've already sent over to Frontier uh, and also get this out to people to hopefully, you know, save to Frontier early enough that they're able to change this. Like, it is so odd. Again, like the same goes over here. You open the menu to create a new ride and it's not visible in here because I'm not in the blueprints. As soon as I click on the blueprints, the rides are visible. Like, I do have this exclusive menu for them, which is great because it works like a little bit of a, you know, um, Zoopedia almost like. So this is, this is nice. But why is it in this way the first place? Why is it not just in general like the menu um, that you click when you are in the section? I... Just, just makes me crazy. Um, so many things that I wish they are going to fix. And last but not least, I need to talk a bit about a feeling thing. It's nothing I can show you on screen, unfortunately. But I, I couldn't, I couldn't stop thinking that I needed to have a controller in my hand the entire time. There are like small things, like invisible magnetic forces that drive you into the center of the screen and also building your coaster um, in, in with the coaster items always had that weird snapping almost I want to say like you know going into a direction and using your mouse cursor to swoop the coaster track around it always wanted to it almost felt like there's a little delay in the input, which, to be honest, this was a stream. Like, we've been streaming the game via Parsec, which is a service, um, like, for remote play. So the delay could also come from that. I say that, you know, because it only is fair. But um, it, it is beyond the input delay. It felt really like there is something that makes the whole workflow on controller better. And so here is me to hope 
that they first of all wanted to nail that because this is something more or less new or actually this time around it's the first time that this will be released on console with day one which um Hopefully this is the reason why they want to nail that first and then take the last couple months to bring in all the back, all the old, you know, PC controls because, like, they are literally the ones you just need to copy-paste. It's not like that this was a bad menu at all in the past and you needed to change something. Um, a lot of these things were great. And there are some changes in the menu I completely agree with. Like, there's a lot of stuff that I do agree with. But also, as you've seen here, the new weather overview is great. But then again, the timing, like to change the time of day, is back to the old one while we had such a better slider in Planet Zoo already. I really don't know why they didn't bring that one in. Um, the UI I was just clicking in quickly, like for the park management, is so much better. I love it. It's not that clunky menu on the left-hand side, half on your screen. It is now a proper menu that you can click through and go through. I like that. But yet again, you can see this again magically where the coaster landed and I needed to manage manually bring it down to the ground like all these little things together created this weird feeling to me that this at the moment is optimized for a controller and despite all the other things that are great this is maybe my biggest concern as of now because it could stop especially us creative players from being quicker in this game which is super odd to me because the game offers so many things to be quicker like they they have added so many things to have a better workflow but the ui makes it impossible right now to make use of it and i think this is my baseline like let us make use of all the great new tools with a ui that supports it rather than give us a ui that basically counters every of the quality of life improvements by making the ui more clunky and honestly it's it's not a criticism on a level of yeah, I'm too lazy to get used to it. That's not a thing. For me personally, there are a lot of inconsistencies in here. Also from, because I do it from my daily job. You know, I've, I've, I've been working with UI designers for over 15 years now. So I kind of know what I'm talking about. Um, I know that the team is great at Frontier and it feels almost like the, 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 the finishing, you know, the finishing is missing. But a lot of these things like don't fix something that isn't broken you know it's just i really hope that they take this um video and also my feedback list as an inspiration and i'm very sorry that this becomes such a long video because i wanted to get all my thoughts and emotions across uh that they have to fix it but anyways let's end this on a very positive note if this is my biggest concern we are a, really on a very good way because after all you could get used to it and i'm very sure that as always, we'll find workarounds for that. But hell, I don't think we have to, so please let us not need to find any workarounds. With that said, have a good time, guys, and uh, thank you so much for watching, as always, and let me know your thoughts on it, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Goodbye.